Can you guys see my PowerPoint there? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, so uh, welcome. If you're if you're just showing up, I'm Todd. I'm a, a reef educator for the Grouper Moon Project, and we're going to give people just a couple more minutes to to float in, uh, and then we'll get things started. Uh, and you can see here on the screen sort of our our agenda for the day. Um, but let's we're going to give people just another minute or two. I'm going to get a drink of water, and then we'll get started. All right. I just sent out a quick email reminding everyone with the link, and um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, and I'm I'm sure we'll ha we'll have a few more people show up. I see a few others that are here. Thank you all for being here. Um, our goal today is to um, do our educator workshop, an abbreviated version, um, online, and uh, this is streaming at the same time on Reef's YouTube page. So if you are, for whatever reason, having a difficult time um, joining this, uh, you can go to YouTube, just go to Reef's YouTube page and it'll be streaming there right now. We'll also, uh, it'll also be archived there and I will send out a copy of this, this talk to all the educators uh, to, to review uh, for those of you that weren't there or, or want to, to see it again. Um, so again, my name's Todd. Uh, let me put myself on here. So uh, my name's Todd. Uh, I'm a reef educator. Um, I've been working on the Grouper Moon uh, project for the past 10 years, I'm working exclusively with the educational component of this project, working with schools uh, throughout the Caribbean uh, and in the United States and in the UK, um, teaching them uh, about this amazing uh, fish and the incredible conservation project um, that I've uh, been fortunate enough to work on for these past 10 years. And to, to uh, give you a, a, a solid understanding of this project and how it got started and the, the special relationship that, that we have, REEF, with the Department of the Environment uh, uh, on this project, I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Croy McCoy, who is going to tell you about um, the project. So hold on one second, and I'm going to pull him up onto the screen. Hi, Croy. How are you doing? Pretty good. Awesome. So, Croy, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn things over to you, and I might just prompt you with some questions as you're going to explain some things, if that's necessary. Is that okay? That's great. Awesome. So, Croy, could you tell us uh, how you got started with this, and 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 what's been going on? Well, it, the birthplace of Grouper Moon was in Little Cayman in 2000, and that was when the some local fishermen rediscovered the aggregation over there. And back then it was uh, no rules and regulations for extraction. So um, with the bit of a public outcry due to the extraction of uh, the Cayman government put a, uh, a ban 
while everything was being assessed. And at that time, some reef volunteers or members were on the island in Little Cayman and they were very ambitious to join us in trying to assess the population and, and stuff of these Tenosa groupers. And that turned into a project and that was the birth of the group of Moan. It started way back in 2000. And we, with the Cayman government putting a uh, moratorium and extraction, it gave us and bought us the time to do the biology and ecology of the Nasa grouper. Because there was very little work was being done up until then. Because of the about 50 around the Caribbean, they were all fished to levels that there was no non existent in one sense. But uh, yeah, we uh, started uh, the project and assessing the population. They removed over in a span of about two years, fishermen had removed approximately uh, three to 4,000 fish out of the five, or approximately 5,000. And the population was around 1,500 fish maximum in Low Cayman. And Brack was a few hundred, and Grand Cayman was denuded of all fish and, to her knowledge. And during the process and over the years, that population managed to rebound from about 1,500 fish to a few thousands and to a few thousand over a couple of years and have since been um, almost doubling in our assessments annually after that. So it's, it was one of those projects that you didn't think was achievable, but with the expert advice and guidance of um, people from Reef and Scripps and Oregon State and NOAA, we managed to bring that population back to one of the largest known in the whole region. And it's still very, uh, very active. And we hope to, COVID stopped us last year from doing all the science that we normally do. And, but we hope to this coming January to have a thorough uh, assessment of the population and get on with a lot of the other science as we better understand the biology and ecology of this animal in an effort to bring the whole population and the whole region back to the status it had possibly, you know, 30 or 40 years ago when it was a staple of the Caribbean. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Croy. Um, so, uh, can you just tell me uh, or tell everyone that's that's listening where do you see where do you see grouper moon going in the future what, what um you know what, what, you've had all of this success is there is what's the what's the next step for you guys that is a constantly moving goalpost yeah know, as we learn more and we develop a, a fisheries management plan from back in 2016 that is is working because the population in the sister island of Brack, which is only you know a few kilometers away, population has also been more than quadrupled since we put those management plans in place and all the work we're doing. Um, in direction, we we are the leaders in group of research in the region, possibly globally, mm -hmm. and what we have managed to achieve with such few people in such a small island. So. Um, it's incredible. It, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I think the direction should move more towards management strategies of not only the NASA group or species, but, um, the, the, the surrounded species around the region have really been knocked back in the last few decades to levels that, um, you can almost class them as being, um, non-functional, the aggregations of other species, often of similar species, of like the uh, yellowfin grouper and stuff. Right. And uh, we're hoping to start, because these these uh, other fish also use this uh, particular site for purposes of reproduction. You know, it's it's a it's sort of like the, I always term it as the maternity wards of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the right. So, it's where right. All, parents go to have babies and we hope to um, expand it into not only the NASA grouper, but also other species that 
use these special areas and and do the science necessary to formulate management plans for not only us but to, to lead by example for other countries to follow suit and replenish in their fisheries of these very important predator fish on our reefs. Um, what, one last question, uh, Croy. Wh wh why do you think it's important that we do, and, and I'm, I'm asking for you to, to talk to the teachers that are here, you know, wh why is it important that we teach this in, in the schools? Why is it important that teachers participate and share this information with their community? Uh, well, my view is conservation starts not only in the heart, but at home. And we, when kids grow up, they um, are constantly aware of their impact on the marine environment. And unless you teach that at a very early stage in their development, they, it does not take hold in understanding, you know, not only biological concepts, but also, um, you know, how the impact we have on the environment and how we manage species, in this case, at a very sustainable level. And that, the spillover of that is the fact that during open season, you know, you can still, people can still enjoy having, you know, an Nassau grouper on the table if they want to, if they choose. Right. And, you know, it, it, the management of any, um, anything, including NASA groupers, is the fact of um, getting compliance to follow, everyone follows the rules, then everyone is happy. Right. And that, that doesn't happen overnight. So the, that behavior is one of the hardest things, the social aspect of um, any management plan with any marine species is that social interaction where people understand how they can also not only harvest, but also enjoy a snorkel on the reef and those fish or those species will always be there. So right. It starts at home, the whole Yes, thing. You yes. can do as much science as you want and you can you know, have the best management plans, but until you have that interconnection with kids, teachers, moms, dads, and everyone understanding that we're all in this together, if we're gonna use this resource as at a sustainable level, you know, across the whole spectrum, then it all works in everybody's favor. Thank you so much, Croy, for being here and sharing today. Um, okay, we're, I'm going to, we're gonna say goodbye to Croy, bye Croy. Bye. Um, and I'm going to share my PowerPoint again with you guys. One second. This yard stream is still kind of a new program for me, although teachers are all now becoming professionals at streaming uh, uh, our lessons and everything online because, well, COVID. All right. So, uh, again, I introduced myself, Todd, uh, educator with Reef, um, and then we just spoke with Croy McCoy. Dr. Croy McCoy, uh, and now I'm going to go over um, a, a, an overview of the curriculum, and then I'm going to talk about a few of the lessons that I that I'm going to suggest that you use, um, but they're just suggestions, of course, and um, uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about the norms for the live stream because there are some norms that we need to follow to make the live stream go well, uh, and then and then we'll have time for questions. And we're going to do our best to keep this under an hour. All right, so off we go. Okay, so just a brief overview of the education program. Um, in 2011, we started the, the educational component um, of the Grouper Moon program. And um, since then, we've worked with over 20 schools uh, and, and uh, nearly 2,000 students uh, in the Cayman Islands and the, and, uh, the Caribbean generally. Um, as well as a few schools in the United States and in the UK. Uh, and you can see here on the left is a picture of uh, some uh, year four class from Spot Bay from quite a while ago. Those kids are probably all graduated now. And then on the right, you see um, uh, two of our scientists on the Grouper Moon aggregation site uh, sharing what they're seeing with, with kids in the classroom during one of our live streams. All right. So our mission 
and uh, is to create an engaging, cutting edge marine science curriculum, presenting a multifaceted view of the Nassau grouper that culminates in these really cool live stream video sessions that we have uh, between students and scientists who are in the field. So um, at the end of at the end of this in in January when we all come back together, I'll be there on Little Cayman and we'll be streaming live from the research site, and your students will be able to engage with the scientists, ask questions, and see see really sort of behind the scenes of what what goes on uh, on a conservation project. And you can see on the right there's a few screen grabs that I took of some of our live streams, um, uh, and some of the uh, the, the experiences that we had. So the top and in the middle, you can see they were underwater. Uh, I think that's Dr. Bryce Simmons uh, talking about the NASA. And then on the bottom, uh, we've got, I believe, I can't, I believe that that was Spot Bay, but I, I could be wrong. That might not be Spot Bay on the bottom. That's a, another class of uh, year four students that were participating. You can see they're all having fun. Look at the smiles on their faces. It's a fun program. Your kids are going to love it. Um, okay, so best teaching practices, we believe in experiential learning, which is the idea that kids learn best by doing. Uh, we also believe in a constructivist approach, which is the idea that kids learn best when they're engaged in their own learning, actively creating their own understanding. And so the lessons that we've created tend to be more hands-on as much as possible um, to, to create that experiential constructivist approach. The content. Um, so there's a number of, there's a, a, a suite of activities that we've created for elementary, middle, and high school students. Um, and all of those are available to you. And I'll share with you later in this talk where to get all of that information. But uh, the lessons focus on the historical and cultural significance of the Nassau grouper. Um, but we also focus on coral reef ecology, what makes a healthy reef. Um, how to identify uh, uh, the different food webs that exist, the different trophic levels that, that exist, um, fish identification and understanding keystone species. Those are all uh, ideas that we, uh, that we touch on in the lesson. Um, we use uh, real field science tools and techniques and, and we're teaching marine conservation concepts. You know, how, how do we protect this really important resource that we have so that it will be there into perpetuity? And that's that's our whole goal, right? Is to to protect our our fish and our reef um, so that our kids and our kids' kids will will be able to enjoy it in the future. Okay, so one of the main I'm gonna I don't like not being able to see you guys. Sorry, I'm I'm just gonna keep it in this little that view. Is that all right? I know it's kind of annoying, but now I can see you. When I have it full screen, it blocks it, so I can't see anybody, and I can tell. Okay. All right, so this is the Grouper Moon blog. Um, and I'll be sending out this PowerPoint. You guys can have it and uh, information. There is a blog uh, that we've been keeping um, for the last 10 years. Uh, and once the once we get started with Grouper Moon, so the, the Grouper Moon this year is going to be the week of uh, January 16th. I, be, I believe the 16th or the 17th is the first full moon for uh, Sunday or Monday. And then um, we'll be doing our live video feeds on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week. Um, that whole week, I will be posting multiple uh, blog posts on this education blog, which you all have access to with uh, on your computer and that you can share with your students. And on the blog, um, uh, it's a way for me uh, to share information with all of the educators in a, in a different way. Um, you know, uh, you can go see, you can check it out anytime. You don't have to go at a certain time. You know, it's an asynchronous sort of activity. You can go there anytime to see updates on what's going on. And I often will focus on um, newer elements of the project that that might that we might be doing. Um, some of the the scientific tools that scientists use. I'll interview scientists. Um, we'll I'll post pictures of of cool marine life that, that the scientists see while they're out there. Um, and all of that uh, is on the blog. And um, I think it's just a, it's a really, if you, um, well, I'll, I'll show you actually, let's, let's go to the blog. Let me just share the page with you. Go 
Tools. Maybe. Sure. Okay. That's not it. That's it. Okay, so this is the blog. Um, and if you look at it, uh, there's a few tabs here at the top. And I'm hoping you can all see that. Um, so uh, you'll see here at the top, there's different there's different tabs for, for information for you. And you can share this with families and with school administration so they understand what it is that we're doing. Um, this tab shares a whole um, synopsis of the program. Um, tons of information, maybe more than you wanted, but um, I, I often suggest that teachers, you know, use this to share with their families what, what we're doing. Um, uh, what we also have are a couple of videos, and um, this I, was a video that I suggested people watch, the Changing Seas Grouper Moon documentary. Um, which was published or produced by PBS. And there's a link that takes you directly to it. It's a half an hour video. Um, it's appropriate for all ages. And I think that it um, is a great launching uh, point for, for beginning to get your students ready uh, for, uh, for engaging with the, the live stream. So I would definitely show uh, this documentary. All right, go back to this. Um, and then there's other there's other cool stuff on here as well. So let's see. So there's an old PSA that's not that exciting. But then so this live streaming tab right here, when we're doing our live streams on on those days in January, um, uh, this is a quick way to get right to those live streams. If you click here, it will take you there. All right. And here's some awesome posts uh, that Amanda Brown did last year. Uh, a Cayman uh, educator who was able to be there since, while we weren't there and shared a lot of awesome experiences that they had on the Grouper Moon project. And so I will be sharing similar things to this when I'm there. And one of the great things that you can do is you can leave a reply and kids can leave replies to any of the posts. And, um, and this is something you can do as a whole class or you can have it be an assignment. But I have my kids go and ask questions. You know, I, I want them to think of questions that that are being prompted by the things that I'm posting. So, you know, please explain blah, blah, blah. Right. And so kids can post that directly on there and I will see it as soon as it gets posted. Um, I'll get an email saying that someone has posted something to the blog and then I can go on there and respond directly to the student. Um, and other students will will sometimes respond to each other, but it, it's just a cool way to engage uh, with the project and to to keep I don't know keep, keep your pulse on what's going on when we're not actually meeting together. So I strongly recommend that you use the blog, um, use it for while we're there, use it as a resource hub for the documentary and for information about the Grouper Moon Education Project or program, um, and then. Uh, there was one other thing I was going to say about the blog. Oh, and as a as a place for your kids to engage with us. I, I mean, you they can literally just ask us questions. Todd, you said this. What does that mean? Put it, you know, in, encourage them to ask those questions so that we can respond to them uh, on the blog and and get them coming and using that resource. Uh, it's a it's a very handy resource that hasn't been used to its full potential. I don't think in the past. The blog also will, will be where I post every lesson that we've created. And so when we're done with this tonight, I'll go onto the blog and the first post that you go, when when you go to it will be a list of all of the lessons that you can just click on and it will take you to a PDF of those lessons that you can use with your students. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. There we go. All right. Okay, so we've talked about the blog. Next. Oh, and we talked about the documentary. So again, I strongly recommend sharing this documentary with your kids. I would watch it yourself beforehand just so that you have some background information. Um, 
Uh, I always find it's helpful to, to preview anything that I'm going to show my students, so I suggest you watching it first. Um, but it really gives the, the students a great uh, overview of the project and uh, lots of really um, solid background knowledge. Um, it's also uh, old. It's, uh, it's like 10 years old, I think, at this point now. Um, and so some of the information isn't up to date. And that's kind of fun because the, the kids the kids will get to ask, oh, so that was, well, what's what's happening now? You know, okay, well, these were the great things that were happening 10 years ago. We, let's talk about some of the progress that's happened since then. Um, so just remember that when you're sharing this with them, that, that it was made about 10 years ago. So some of the information, um, you know, about catch limits and restrictions and those things might be a little bit different today. Another resource that I strongly recommend using as an anchor text for elementary and middle school is Cynthia Shaw's book, Grouper Moon, um, which is a fictional story about a young boy uh, growing up in a Caribbean island and uh, his family sends them off fishing on Christmas morning to, to catch a grouper to salt to have traditionally uh, for their Christmas meal and he ends up making friends with a grouper and they go on adventures and he learns all sorts of awesome stuff about the grouper and about coral reef ecology in general. Um, I've done it as a read aloud. I've had students read it on their own uh, as, a whole, as a whole group, you know, a whole class read. Um, kids really like it. There's pictures in it. I strongly recommend it. Uh, I've sent copies of this out to almost every school that has participated already with the program. But if you don't have a copy and you need a copy, you can just email me and I'll do my best to get some copies uh, sent out to DOE and we can get those uh, dispersed to, to teachers that are out there in the islands. Um, so this is another suggestion for you. Grouper Moon is a great uh, book that you could start reading, um, you know, when you get back from, from the holiday break. You know, you don't need to finish it before you start doing the live streams with us, even if you just made a couple of chapters into it, that would be great background knowledge for your kids uh, uh, and give them a lot to talk about in the live streams. Okay, so we've got the blog, we've got the documentary, we've got the book, um, we've got some games uh, for, and I've done these this game uh, with elementary, with year four students primarily. Um, and there, this it's called uh, the Grouper Race for Survival. And this is just the game board that you're looking at here. I'll make it bigger for you. Um, and so th this will be one of the lessons that's posted on the blog for you guys to use. And this is just the game board with the little directions. There's there's several other pages that explain in detail the thinking behind and how to how to play the game and 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 all of that. But I. This is one of those hands-on experiential type activities that kids really enjoy. They learn while they're having fun and playing a game. Um, so I would definitely suggest doing it. And it really explains to kids a lot of the challenges and hurdles that grouper have to make uh, in order to survive after spawning and to, to, to uh, live to be old enough to become reproductively uh, mature and to go to the aggregation and, and have more, more grouper. So the grouper race for survival game, it's a fun, quick activity, strongly recommend it. What we also have created are these great um, marine life cards. Uh, and th this is sort of the front and the back, you can see here the front uh, on the right and the back on the left. And, and there's, set, there's a set of them, right? So spiny lobster, uh, coral polyps, and um, and on the front are, are images, and then on the back are uh, facts about each of the uh, marine life that's on the, that's on the card. And um, I do a number of different activities with these cards with kids. I'm going to come back to you. So uh, one of the things that I do with these cards is I will pass one out to every student in the class. And that becomes a research project for them. Okay, you're you're and you know you can actually fold them out, hold them out like a deck of cards, and have each student you know pick one. And um, and uh, one of the activities that we have in the lesson plans is a field guide, uh, uh, sort of a, a field guide uh, rubric uh, or an outline. And, and so students can use that to do some research on their specific marine life and to share. The, those field guide pages with the class. You can put those field guide pages together and have a class field guide of all of the cool marine life um, 
well, it's not all of it, but it's a lot of the great, amazing uh, marine life that's that's there in the in the uh, in the Caribbean. So that's one one way to get students some background knowledge is to have them do some small research projects on the different marine life that exists there. Um, and these um, these marine life cards are uh, an excellent way to do that. We also use these cards to do a fun food web activity. And that's where um, I pass out the cards to all the students. And all, the, all of what I'm telling you right now, you don't need to write notes down for any of this stuff. It, it's all, it'll all be explained for you in detail in the lesson plans. Um, but this food web activity really shows um, students the interrelationships between everything that lives in the coral reef. Um, and so what happens is each kid, each student gets a, a marine life card and, and I'll have them do a number of activities with them. Before I have them do the actual food web, I'll have them make some food chains. So I'll say, okay, you need to go find someone that eats you. And then I'll say, and then, okay, now I, need, I want you to go find someone that you eat, right? And if you don't eat someone, then you're gonna have to find someone else that eats you. And, and so, so you're kind of meeting different people that are directly connected to you on the, on the, food, on the food web and then sharing your information, the facts that you've learned about your particular marine, marine animal or marine life. And so after I've done that a couple of times and kids have had a chance to get to know at least a few of the, the different species that we'll be talking about, then I'll have them get into a big circle. And you can see uh, uh, I'm doing this with a year four class, but I've done this with, with elementary, middle school, and high school students. All of them, it works wonderfully. And so I give each student a card and I have them stand in a circle around the classroom and I have just a bolt of yarn. And I start by giving the bolt of yarn to the person that is um, on the bottom of the food web. And so um, uh, uh, algae, I believe the algae card is the one that I, I usually start with uh, or yeah, but it, it's all, again, all explained in the, in the lesson plan. And I give that student the, the bolt of, of yarn. And, and then they go, okay, so who eats algae? And so kids in the circle, if they, if they look on the back of their card and it says, oh yeah, you eat algae, then they, they raise their hand. And the bolt of, of yarn gets thrown to each person that's raising their hand and connected to all of them. And then the last person says, okay, who eats, you know, maybe I'm the turtle, who eats me? And so you start to throw the bolt around of, of yarn to all the different students and, uh, in the end, everyone will be connected to everybody else. Um, and then, and then what we do is I say, okay, well, what happens if we take one of these uh, species out of the ecosystem? How many, how many other species would this really impact? And so I might, I would, I will go up to a student and I'll go, okay, you, you've got the uh, hawksbill turtle. Um, I'm, I want you to just pull on your string. And if the rest of the students, if you feel that tug, I want you to raise your hand and you'll notice, oh, oh three or four other people raise their hand when, when, when we're tugging on that string. So that's showing them the, the interconnectedness of, of all of the, the living organisms in the reef. And then when we get to the higher, to the you know, apex predators, the sharks and the grouper, um, when you pull on those and you see more people raising their hand and the kids really start to understand how important those apex predators are in, in an ecosystem and how much of an impact they have on all of the populations beneath them. Um, this is maybe one of maybe my favorite activity that we do um, in class. It's fun, it's easy, you can do it with any grade. Um, so I would recommend, I would recommend doing it. Um, I've made sets of cards um, that I've given out to most of the schools. If your school doesn't have one, I can share with you all of the PDFs. Um, that's the best I can do for you this year since we're remote. But uh, when I come out this year, I will try to bring um, some more supplies to stock up anyone that that needs more. But all of these cards are available to you uh, to use. All right, one more thing, right? Yes. So here, and I'm gonna make this bigger. Uh, this is another resource that I suggest using. It's a really beautiful um, uh, poster of the life cycle of a Nassau grouper. Um, and you can use this in a number of ways. Um, I use it in tandem with the, the game 
the grouper race for survival game. We'll we'll look at this life cycle poster first before they go and play that game. But um, spending time with the students and going over the life cycle of the, of the grouper is going to be really helpful for them in understanding the challenges that uh, we face with with helping to recover um, grouper populations. Um, and it's a beautiful poster. And again, this is this is going to be posted on the blog. You can get this. You can download it. You can print it. You can put it on on the screen if you want. Uh, but this is again is another excellent resource. Uh, for you to use. All right. Okay, and then we get to the week of uh, live streams. Um, so let me look at my calendar so I'm not saying the wrong days. Right. Okay. So our first day, and this is this is all going to be posted. Don't worry about writing it down. But our first day will be Tuesday the 18th. And then we'll have three days in a row where we're going to have live live streams, okay? And th this is one of the underwater live streams. Um, but here's another, here's some pictures of some of the others, uh, some other settings for the live stream. Um, so we'll have, like I said, we'll have three different live streams on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, Friday is a backup day. Sometimes... Um, we have technical issues that prop that uh, crop up on the Grouper Moon project. Uh, there's many things that can happen, from weather to tech issues to whatever. And so we have Friday as a backup day in case one of the days, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, or the Thursday doesn't work out. If there's problems, then uh, we have Friday as uh, as a backup. Um, so just know that it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with the possibility of Friday if there's a problem. Um, and then you can see here in the pictures that uh, on the bottom right is uh, another uh, group of year four students and they're they're watching the live stream. Um, and then uh, you can see a couple other classes watching the live stream. And so the three the three live streams that we do kind of go in this order. The, the first two are going to be on dry land, sort of like you can see happening in this this bottom one right here. You see me talking to the kids on the screen. And that'll be, we'll, we'll do the first two sessions um, with the scientists in person. And we'll be, those two sessions, we'll be introducing the scientists. The scientists will be sharing kind of their stories and, and what's been going on so far on the project and what they're seeing out there. Um, they'll be sharing the different tools that they use to, um, to help protect the, the grouper and the different tools they use to count them and to photograph them and all of the, the experiments that they're doing will share as many of those tools as possible on those live streams and, and give kids tons of background information and lots of opportunities to engage directly with scientists. And so I'll, often we'll have a couple of scientists join us on each of those live feeds and then they can talk directly with students. Then the, the final live feed um, we, we do from underwater. Uh, and so we we uh, will go to often we go to Bloody Bay Wall on uh, Little Cayman, which is a world famous dive site. And uh, uh, one of our scientists will go with an AGA face masks, uh, which allows him to speak to you uh, while he's underwater and will take you on a tour of of the reef. And when we're there, we're going to be identifying um different marine species that we've already been talking about and learning about. We'll also be identifying sort of the elements uh, that we're, scientists are looking for in identifying a healthy reef. So, um, and that's usually the the Thursday live stream. Uh, that final one will be from from underwater. And that is the one that sometimes we do have tech issues with and, and why we have that backup day on Friday. Hmm. Okay, I know I'm plowing through this. I, I promise at the end, we're gonna have plenty of time for questions if you have any. And if you are watching this asynchronously, if you're not watching this live, you are welcome to email me anytime any of your questions. I'm here to support you. Uh, just shoot me an email and I'll help you out. Okay, so when we actually have the live stream, you guys are gonna join the same way that you joined today. A couple of things to remember, when we're live, uh, keep your mics off like you're all doing right now. You guys are awesome. I think everyone's had lots of practice in the last couple of years with live streaming. So maybe this year is going to be it. We're going to turn a new leaf. Uh, but keep your mics off um, 
they they echo and makes makes it difficult to hear what's going on. Um, when you're ready for, if you have a question, there is a chat on the right hand side of your screen, and you can say, let me see if you can see this. That pop up for you in the chat to the right. Can you guys see the chat? No, I'm only, so let me see if I bring you in. Hillary, is it okay if I bring you into this call, into the, for just a second and see if that makes the difference? I'm going to, I'm just going to add you to the stream for a minute. When I add you, does that now pop up the, the chat on the right side? Okay. My apologies. I'll figure out what's going on with the chat, but there will be a chat that you have access to on the right side of your screen that you can talk to me personally during the live stream and no one else sees it, just us. And you can say, okay, Todd, we've got a question. And then um, I can say, okay, now we have a question from Spot Bay. I'm going to turn it over uh, to Mr. Stewart, who's got a student's going to ask their question. Um, so the chat is a great place to ask me questions or to tell us, you know, if you're ready for a question or you, you want to uh, participate in what's going on, you have something to say, the chat's great. If for whatever reason you're not able to access the chat, I will have people checking my email the whole time. So you can, you know, you can see it now, Hillary. Awesome. Well, here, will you unmute yourself and say what you did? Oh, thank you. Um, let's see. Bradley Johnson showed that it's in the comments. It's not in private chat. So just click on the comment section. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bradley. Awesome. Thanks, Bradley. Um, uh, Bradley Johnson is uh, also works with the Department of the Environment and is an integral part of this project, has been from the beginning. And really, I mean, we, we wouldn't be here today without a super important person. Thank you. So keeping mics off, um, try to keep the camera pointed at your students, um, so they, which is cool so they can see themselves on the screen and they can see, you know, but sometimes teachers will just have it folk pointing at them. And I, I encourage you to, to have the camera, if you can, pointing at your students. Um, and then finally, use, using the chat feature, which we just explained, the comments feature, um, to ask questions. Uh, please use that. Or feel free to email me um, during the live stream. I will be checking my email throughout the live stream. So if there's something that's not working, if you're having tech issues, just shoot me that email. And either I will get back to you or someone that's helping um, field those questions will, will contact you and help you problem solve anything that's going on for you. And don't feel bad because it happens to all of us. I mean, you, know, you feel like you're prepared and then we get to the day of and the audio isn't working or you, some, you know, something's blocked. Um, when that, if that happens, we're here to support you. Just shoot me an email and uh, I will have someone contact you and we'll, we'll problem solve whatever's going on for you. Um, which makes, this is making me think of something that I didn't include on the PowerPoint, but I think uh, is important to note. I, I would suggest um, joining those live streams about 10 minutes early. Um, and you, you don't have to make it live for the kids, but just popping on, making sure that your computer is connecting to it, that you can see everything there. And then, and then, um, and that way, if you're going to know ahead of time, if you're having tech issues and you can let us know and we can help you solve that rather than waiting, uh, you know, right, right when it's happening um, can make it sometimes more challenging. But those are really the only norms that you that we need to follow during the live stream, keeping mics off, cameras on students, use the chat to ask questions. All right. All right, so here's the live stream schedule. As of right now, we've typically done them. Um, so do you, yeah, so Tuesday, the 18th, 19th, and 20th, we've done them traditionally at 1030 in, in the morning, and they go for about an hour. Now, that time is not solid yet. Usually what I do um, uh, is after I have my list of educators that are going to be doing this, doing the, uh, the live streams, um, I'll email all of you and and just make sure that schedules line up 
And so if we have to do an adjustment, like, oh, it really would work better for everyone if we started at 10. So there might be there might be a little bit of shifting after I get some feedback from you guys about your schedules, that whether or not 1030 is going to work. So usually, you know, somewhere around 10, between 10 and 11 is, is when those live streams happen. And um, when I send you out an email, please give me feedback on whether or not that's going to work for you. If that's prohibitive for you, please let me know so that we can schedule around that. Um, and then, as I said, Friday is that backup day. Um, in case anything goes wrong, which it won't, but if it does, uh, we have Friday as a backup um, for all of you. All righty. I have talked way too much. Um, so now it's time for questions. Let me unshare. All right. Um, so I see we, we've got a lot of reef people here. There's a couple of teachers as well. Um, uh, if uh, you have a question that you want to ask, you can you can write your question into the into the comments or uh, or yeah, you can just put say say hey Todd, I've got a question and I can and I can call on you. And while I'm waiting for you guys to come up with with some questions, I'm going to talk about some some just troubleshooting situations that have happened in the past that that might help you. Um, uh, making like checking all of your equipment ahead of time. So one thing that I'll do the week before we go live, so that first week of January. I will make a practice live stream um, that'll happen at a convenient time for you, um, for you to pop in and to and to just practice using the chat, practice talking back and forth with me, uh, and to make sure that all of your everything's working correctly. Um, we can do a little uh, troubleshooting that way. So on the week the week before the sixteenth, uh, I will probably I usually do like two of them, uh, you know, like a Tuesday and a Thursday right around three o'clock when you when you get out of school. And those will just be, you just pop in, you know, join us for a couple of minutes, make sure the mic works, see, make sure you're able to navigate through the, the site, ask me any questions that you have. Um, but that's a great way to uh, to work through any kinks ahead of time. Um, so we, we will do that. That's something that would be helpful. Um, another thing, the microphones on computers are wonky. And so sometimes when kids come up, um, they need to get really close to the computer, like maybe a little bit closer than they're comfortable with, but encourage them to get close to ask their questions so that we can hear. Because uh, sometimes that's the challenge, especially if there's a whole class of students and they're sort of rumbling in the background and someone in the front's trying to share, try to get them close to the to the microphone so that we can we can hear that question. Um, what else are some some things that we have? had struggles with or issues that we faced. I mean, if you have, I mean, so like I've said before, if there's any questions that you have, you can email me and I'm here to support you. Um, I will post all of the lessons on the blog just when we're done here today. I'll go home tonight and I'll post all those lessons on the blog. So you'll just go straight to the blog. I'll include the link again for the blog, but it's in all your previous emails. I've included the link. Uh, but I'll include it in a, in a wrap-up email to send to you guys, and you can go there and download any of the lessons. Now, those lessons are just a springboard. You know, you don't have to use those. You can we can adapt those. We can make them work for what you're doing in your in your classroom and for the time constraints that you have. So if you're like, well, I'd like to do this, but I need to kind of adjust it to make it work for my students, I can help you uh, uh, adapt uh, your lessons to work for you. So you know, if you want to come up with something new or if you want to change something, please. Uh, just email me and I'm here uh, to support you guys in that way and help you work through any questions or issues that you're having with with the lessons. Or just if you have questions in general, you know, I, I don't really understand this concept. Uh, explain this more to me. I'm here to, to support you in that way as well. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions, so I, we're going to wrap it up for today. I just want to thank everyone for being here and joining. Special thanks to Croy, Dr. Croy McCoy for being here and sharing his experience. And thanks to Bradley Johnson for solving our tech problem. Um, I'll send out an email tonight with the link. You can get your lesson plans. Um, I will also uh, uh, post all of, the, all of the lessons for you and, you know, email me. 
and and I'm I'm here as a resource to support you to help you do this successfully with your students. And if there's any stumbling blocks that you face, uh, I I can help you solve those. And and we've got you know people there at the Department of the Environment that can that are also there to support you guys with what's happening. So if I'm not there, you know we can we can get people there to to come and support you. No matter what, if you're having tech issues, let us know and and we can get that problem solved before next month and make sure that that you're able to join. Uh, the live stream with your students. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. I'm going to, Croy, I'm going to bring you back on just for a minute. So I'm say bye to Croy. Croy, thank you so much for being here. And, and thanks all of you guys for joining. And please, so this, this live stream is, is being uh, recorded and saved onto the Reef uh, YouTube page. I will copy and share that link with all of you, but share it with anyone. Anyone that you think might be interested in doing this program, share that link with them so they can watch this and 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 hopefully participate with the with the project this year. Um, and that's it for today. And thank you, Todd, for inviting me, and thank the audience for and the listeners out here. Thank you so much, Croy. Uh, I, I'm so grateful to to be able to still work on this with you guys, and it's so amazing to see the the success of, of the project. It, it, it's, it's really incredible. So, you know, huge compliments to everyone on this project. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys all in a, in a few weeks. All right. That's it for today, you guys. I'll see you next time. Take care. Go Grouper Moon.